So what's going on, guys? Language modeling, a scale, golfer, ethical considerations, and the retrieval. DeepMind released this super model. It's the largest. It's the largest language model ever been built. Uh, just uh, two weeks ago, a week or two weeks ago, and we're going to look at what he, uh, kind of advantages he has. What kind of novelties? there is and uh, uh, just uh, also discuss what's the future of language modeling do we just uh, uh, indefinitely increase the size of a language model will there be a path or we should do something else so that's for today's video um, it will be very interesting by the way before we dive in if you would like to receive more ai news ai analysis like today's video don't forget okay, so to let, let's look into that language and its own role um the blah, 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 basically it's just preamble and uh, saying that it, it could be dangerous if we just randomly apply uh language model on the internet data right definitely i agree with that so they train the uh, 2080 uh 280 bdm parameter transformer language model it's called gopher uh, if you compare the size to GPT-3, GPT-3 is around 175 billion uh, parameter model. So this model is far larger than GPT-3, but it's not like uh, the order of magnitude larger. It's probably like 30 percent larger. Okay, then I think the more more important thing is uh, they also investigating the new architecture with a better training efficiency. So this is an interesting paper they out there, and I believe it's a deep my paper as well, or it's actually the same paper. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of text, but we're going to just uh, look at this. Uh, sorry, what's going on here? Okay. So a golfer, two hundred eighty billion parameter language model, and it just shows uh, its power. It he has actually very a lot of different sizes like GPT-3, GPT-3 small, large, a lot like seven different size different sizes. This is become already become a standard of um, doing language model research. If you want to build a pretty large one, you need to have some other uh, control groups which is smaller, same architecture, same training data, but much smaller model. So 44 billion parameters to this 280 BDM, uh, 44 million, which is quite small. It's if you compare to Bird, um, Bird Large, Bird Large. I remember it's uh, around 30, 300 billion. So this is actually very small, very small model. Okay, so they actually investigated the strengths and the weakness weaknesses of different size model and highlight some area. Um, and they, 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 if how we can do if we want to boost performance, they perform a lot of ta NLP tasks like reading comprehension, fact checking, and the identification of toxic language. Uh, this is interesting. Interesting. Um, a lot of uh, uh, language models when they do the benchmark, they do glue data sets and reading comprehension. But it's first time I see that people using fact checking and identification for toxic language. Maybe that they will be very useful for the, um, those language models, right? I mean, this kind of task. Okay, so we also surface results uh, where model skills does not significant improve the result. Uh, for example, logical reasoning. Yeah, this is definitely uh, that. What I say is actually when they increase the model size, the results uh, did not improve significantly which means model size is kind of irrelevant to uh, logic reasoning. And they also tells us uh, building larger, larger language model will not um, give you reasoning machine. So that's why I'm, uh, that's my, actually my, 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 my philosophy. We shouldn't solve logical reasoning by building larger language model and uh, uh, we can see um, the academic also kind of uh, start going toward this direction. 
at least this this, this line of think, thinking. So they perform, they perform. That's a um, benchmark. I never seen this benchmark before, which must be quite new. Massive multitask language understanding benchmark. So it's probably similar to Glue Glue two point zero, but in many different domain, which is good, which is good. We would want the model to be able to perform well in many different domain. So humanities, social sciences, uh, med medicines, general knowledge, science, technology, and the math. And uh, if you look at the uh, human performance, is still uh, the highest uh, compared to any other model. And uh, some are uh, benchmark uh, baseline is GPT-3 and the uh, golfer. So golfer outperform GPT threes in every category and that's one category um, their difference is not that big which is general knowledge so if you, you look at the general knowledge their differences uh, difference is very small but in the social si science technology the difference is very big it's more than uh, the two time two x difference uh, which is interesting and in math both model perform quite bad, and I don't know what this model is. Unified QA, I guess it's retrieval based. Uh, not that really sure. Uh, there are so many language models out there. Even I read papers every day, can't keep up with. So this is the uh, very interesting model that can perform very well in math. Means it maybe have some uh, logical reasoning cap capability, very weak one. But I suspect it's more likely that the, the infrastructure, the model architecture is built for logical reasoning. Okay, and this, here's the thing. Um, uh, they also uh, do something like use the user to do the conversation with golfer. So you type something, what can you tell me about cell biology? So it says a lot of cell biology things which is pretty normal. We, we, we see a lot of these things from GPT-3 and a lot of it actually from memory. And during the training time, it sees a lot of uh, cell biology data, so it kind of replies it back, uh, which is not, is not really surprising. But if you never seen language models or NLP technologies before, first time I show you this, I show you this is AI. Most people will be Amazed, will be shocked. We we'll say, "Oh, AI is picking up. It's already as good as humans." But it's actually not. It's actually not. A lot of times, I mean, a lot of these results is actually from memorization. It's not. It's not really reasoning uh, or conscious. Okay, so you if you look at this conversation. Uh, you probably will be. If you've never seen, you probably be impressed a little bit. Um, are humans, uh, Barbara? Uh, what's an example of? Prokaryote. I didn't even understand this word, and they will say uh, the definition of that. And definitely, this model also is trained on Wikipedia data. I, I believe so. So they understand the Wikipedia data. But what's interesting is that if you ask for a link, you actually retrieve your link. This is impressive. This is impressive. And uh, they can discuss, and there's. What what's good about this is because you talk about certain very specific domain, but it wasn't fine tuned on that. So that's why uh, they they might want to show you. Oh, this is actually quite powerful. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, slightly impressive. Uh, I mean, compared to GPT three and the other language models, this is line of work is like incremental progress. It's not it's not like like a jump to another dimension. But uh, I I like how details they light out. Uh, they they write so much things um to talk about uh, these models the phenomena so that's actually great and uh, one thing that people people criticizing the 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 thing the model is uh, is about um uh the reasoning or math they couldn't do math they couldn't do too much arithmetic so they are showing you do you know the result of uh, this one uh it's it's two uh do you have any uncertainty about the answer so far uh, no. So it's interesting. Uh, you can begin with something and let's just see the description of this one. Uh, the model failure models, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then here comes to ethical and uh, social risk uh, for large language models. Uh, there are definitely a lot, a, a lot of concerns about large language models and, uh, and they're discussing this kind of risk. Um, like these categories, misinformation harms, discrimination, information hazard, uh, 
malicious users, and uh, they 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 talk about this a lot. They just see take a look at the misinformation harms. Harms may be raised arise from the language model producing false or misleading information. Of course, they, it could it, it actually does a lot, right? And um, if you believe language models, if maybe in the future language model is pretty powerful, then we believe most of things language model says. Then uh, we may be misled by it uh, if he kind of tells you some misinformation that you won't really fact check because you believe in language models too much. It won't happen right now, but it will happen maybe a few years later. And even now, a lot of news actually written by language model. If I tell you, if I didn't tell you this language model, so if I didn't tell you this generated by language model, you probably couldn't tell, right? So that's things. And what what's more interesting is efficient training with internet scale retrieval. So basically, what it says is uh, they just they don't just rely on language models memorization. They also use language model to retrieve something information from database from the internet and answer your questions, which is more reasonable. Because if you ask a very uh, expert, human expert about certain things nowadays, he or she they will reply you something, but there will definitely be some information they they are not sure they're not sure about they're not sure about they need to Google a bit and uh, tell you or they may go to library which is more traditional way to find something find some references then reply you and we humans do that and we shouldn't uh, prohibit that a uh, language model to looking up data looking up information from the internet so what it says is oh language model actually should learn how to retrieve information from the database or internet so that you can answer your que questions uh, quite well so if you ask those questions here um, they will be able to look up on the internet and they will be more efficient and uh, what they argue is they can actually train a much smaller model and still outperform this golfer large model or GPT-3 if they can look up internet so which sounds very straightforward but it's quite hard to do in uh, language model in AI sense it's easy for human but it's still not straightforward for machine for the machine so right this is very interesting paper and they, they they're looking for they're looking for this uh, search who are um, something or evaluated and addressing these areas will be critical in the ensuring safe interaction with AI agents for, from human telling agent what they want agent to explain their action to humans yes may basically explainability they want the AI to be more explainable uh, they will be safer they'll be more transparent also also uh, that's better over overall okay so um that's interesting that's all for today just we uh, so what, what do we learn today we, we look through this article and uh, we discuss uh, what's uh, uh, advantage what's the disadvantage what's the dangers what's the safety issues of large lang language models so if you would like would like to receive more videos like this today's video don't forget to subscribe this channel I produce these kind of videos every week so uh, other than that take care and I will see you next time